Good morning, grandkids. It's time for another chapter in the story about Dorkley in a land far, far away. This is chapter 29. The watching and waiting goes on through the night. The guards, the warriors, and in the harbor, the ship's crews, all rotate at sleeping. The rest remain on watch. Night moves on. Before the dawn can even think about breaking, in the darkest of the night, men in the ship of the skull, far out at the edge of the bay, started slipping over the side. They settle quietly into three long boats. The many rowers started quietly moving their oars through the smooth, cold waters. Soundlessly, furtively, they rowed toward the land of Blue Haven. The fog was thick, hindering their sight. It seemed to the sailors that they hadn't yet been seen, couldn't have been. The land seemed deserted or asleep. Once they got closer, the fog had started lifting. Back on the skull, the captain lowered his spyglass, smiling. Even their two ships seemed asleep as their land did, he was thinking. But in the king's two ships, at anchor close inside the bay, the sailors were well hidden behind their cannons, and now they slipped off the cannon's coverings and waited. The captains of the cannon patrols stood behind them in the shadows. The cannons were loaded and primed, ready to fire. All remained quiet. The captains of the ships were ready. One captain had his spyglass up to his eye while standing enclosed at the wheel, a broad grin on his bearded face. This is going to be the most fun we've had in a long time, he was whispering to himself as he lowered the spyglass and caught glimpses of the incoming longboats. As the boats got well in within the bay, the first thing that happened, shocking the pirates badly, was that the two king's ships anchored near the coast came to life. The captain behind the cannons barked out, fire. The sailors stood up and fired their cannons at the skull ship anchored farther out in the bay. All the king's warriors on the walls rose up and let loose a volley of arrows at the pirates in the boats coming in. The skull had no cannons for some strange reason, but the archers fired at the men on the two ships at anchor, and the swordsmen waited to climb aboard once they got close enough. But the captain on one of the king's ships, with his spyglass held up to his eye again, shouted, I know what you duffers are thinking. You'll never board my ship. And he motioned to the captain below for his men to fire the cannons at the skull once again. Above the ship captain was still yelling, This is a crapshoot, men. That isn't a fighting ship, it's a ship of fools, pirates. You'll never board my ship. The officer below kept yelling fire as they all watched sailors hanging over the skull's ship rails, sailors hanging tangled in the rigging and the ship starting to list, and men, dead and alive, slipping out to sea. Meanwhile, the warriors were still firing arrows from the city walls as officers and guards came out the city gates attacking the sailors landing from the longboats, two of them 
as the third one hung back. The sailors were jumping onto the beach, taking a knee and firing arrows at the men up on the walls, while others with swords rushed forward. General Bonester and his men met the sailors midway on the beach with a clash of swords and cursing, groaning and dying. Many of the sailors died at first contact, and two of the king's guards and a warrior up on the wall were taken down. A troop of guards were directed toward the road curving west toward the small towns to keep that way safe, setting up a blockade. The guards up on the walls were still picking off sailors running up the beach after their third longboat landed. All the men on the beach were getting out swords and daggers, getting up close and personal, jumping over the dead and the dying. Some of the men on the dock ships jumped overboard and onto the beach, taking out daggers and old knives, yelling and running down the beach to help the warriors and the guards. Some of the sailors from the skull had made it as far as the small hovels and merchant stalls that the people had abandoned. One guard was dead lying near a small meat cellar stand which had been knocked over dumping out the meat, which was crawling with ants and beetles. The guard's blood was slowly mingling. I'm sorry, I lost my place. The guard's blood was slowly mingling with scattered fish in the sand drawing even more vermin. Some sailors had crawled under wagons and carts, but had soon been picked off anyway. As the men fought, the early morning was filled yelling and cursing, the clashing swords and screaming, the collapsing of beach cellar stalls and the groaning of the injured and the dying. All up and down the coast, the battle wore on as the sun rose higher. Both sides, lying in injured agony, some dying, both sides weakly fought on. By noon, the sun was high, and so was the heat. The king's men had several of the pirates in irons and were leading them to the city gates to lead them in the to take them to the carts and up to another city gate where a road went west and north on the low mountain to the prison walled in all around back on the beach two exhausted combatants were barely hanging on to one another the guard breathing hard with a dagger at the pirate's throat gasped you want to die or come with me? The pirate was gasping and saying, I'll come with you. I'm too exhausted to die. The guard clapped him on the shoulder and mumbled, Good decision, mate. And off they staggered toward the gate. The sailors from the king's ships returned and climbed up the gangplank captain had lowered for them. They were laughing and crowing about how many Lunkheads they had killed as the lower deck captain handed out drinks to them. They staggered around, bragging to each other and getting drunk before falling down or staggering off to their bunks. Back on the beach, the battle was over. Some of the guards and warriors were dead and many injured, but many more of the pirates were dead and injured, and many being hauled off to prison. General Bonester had the most able men taking charge of the prisoners, but others he told to come up with the best plan for taking care of the dead, the dead prisoners on the beach. Others he told to get involved in notifying the citizens of their dead. He grabbed a passing guard and told him to go into the city and send back as many workers as he could get 
to make repairs of the shanties and the cellar stalls and, he's, and get another crew to start cleaning up the beach. Bonester then walked over to a young man that he had settled down onto a large crate of wine. How are you holding up, Dupree? he said. I'm good, I'm good. Just got an arrow sticking out of my shoulder, he said with a slight grin. Too chicken to pull it out. Bonester, Bonester handed him a bottle of the strongest drink he could lay his hands on and said, Here, drink this. I'll see what I can do. By this time, healers were coming out of the gates, physicians following behind, and the general motioned one of the healers over. Then he asked Dupree, How are you doing with that bottle? Doing good, Bone, doing good. I see you got me a healer. He turned and looked at the healer and said, You ready to do this thing? The gray-robed man said, You want to wait for a long spell with a lot of blather, or you just want me to pull it out? Dupree grinned and said, Just get it over with. So Nestor turned and walked away, but heard a sharp gasp behind him and a long, drawn-out groan. So that's the end of this chapter for today. I hope... <clears throat> Excuse me. I hope you enjoyed it. I realize that uh, I'm not very good in writing battles, so I kept it as short and clear as possible. In reading books, I've noticed that so many authors, when they're in a battle, they detail every little slash and swing or gunshot and bullet wound and <clears throat> when I'm reading them I get so bored because it takes so long to get through it and I know what they're doing anyway so since I don't know how to write that kind of stuff very well at all and I really didn't want to I tried to keep my battle written in a way that it was as short and concise as possible, yet giving you hints of the day progressing on so that you know the panel, the battle was long. So I hope you got through that okay and understood what I was doing and I realized it was a battle, but I was trying to keep it short because I don't know how to write battles and I don't like long ones anyway. So I hope you enjoyed it, kids, and I'll be back next week with another episode and we'll see how that goes so thank you all for being here I'll see you next week I can't find my off button there it is bye bye